The C3, C4, and C5 vertebrae form the midsection of the cervical spine, near the base of the neck. Injuries to the nerves and tissues relating to the cervical region are the most severe of all spinal cord injuries, because the higher up in the spine an injury occurs, the more damage that is caused to the central nervous system. Depending on how severe the damage to the spinal cord is, the injury may be noted as complete or incomplete. C3 vertebrae. The C2 to C3 junction of the spinal column is important as this is where flexion and extension occur. Flexion is the movement of the chin towards the chest and extension is the backward movement of the head. Patients with spinal cord damage at the C3 level will have limited mobility in both their flexion and extension. Symptoms of a C3 level spinal cord injury. Symptoms of a spinal cord injury corresponding to C3 vertebrae include limited range of motion, loss of diaphragm function, requirement of a ventilator for breathing, paralysis in arms, hands, torso, and legs, trouble controlling bladder and bowel function. C4 vertebrae. The portion of the spinal cord which relates to the C4 vertebrae directly affects the diaphragm. Patients with C4 spinal cord injuries typically need 24 hour a day support to breathe and maintain oxygen levels. Symptoms of a C4 level spinal cord injury include loss of diaphragm function, potential requirement of a ventilator for breathing, limited range of motion, paralysis in arms, hands, torso, and legs, trouble controlling bladder and bowel function. C5 vertebrae. Damage to the spinal cord at the C5 vertebrae affects the vocal cords, biceps, and deltoid muscles in the upper arms. Unlike some of the higher cervical injuries, a patient with a C5 spinal cord injury will likely be able to breathe and speak on their own. Symptoms of a C5 level spinal cord injury include ability to speak and breathe in their own, but breathing will be weak, paralysis in torso, legs, wrists, and hands. Paralysis may be experienced on one or both sides. Patients may be able to raise their arms and or bend their elbows. Patients will need assistance with daily living, but may have some independent function. Causes of cervical spinal cord injuries include tumors, trauma, birth defects, motor vehicle accidents, infections or disease, slip and fall. Injury treatment. Unfortunately, there is no treatment which will completely reverse the damage from injuries to the spinal cord at the C3 through C5 levels. Medical care is focused on preventing further damage to the spinal cord and utilization of remaining function. Current treatments available for patients include Fusing the spine and decompressing the nerves around the spinal cord, which can be beneficial in recovery from a spinal cord injury. The use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may help the patient regain some sensory and or motor function. Physical therapy is an important part of recovery to retain use of non-affected areas of the body, as well as those affected by the damage done to the spinal cord. It is an unfortunate truth that there are not many options to date to completely recover from a cervical spinal cord injury. Medical researchers are continuously looking into new drug therapies to help regain sensory and motor function. The use of stem cells is seen more and more in research as these cells are specialized enough to possibly regenerate damaged spinal cord tissues. For more information, please continue to look through SpinalCord.com.